I've seen athletes train with very heavy weights almost daily and recover from it. The best example, of course, is the traditional Bulgarian training system where athletes would max out pretty much every single day or working up to like 90% of their maximum. So, so they can really recover easily from those heavy sessions. Like a, a more recent example, you have Chris Duffin. Chris Duffin, of course, great powerlifter. To raise charity, he, he squatted 800 pounds for 30 straight days. So it, it, it is very heavy lifting. And of course, at the like, very end of the 30th day, he had a slight performance decrease. But up until like week, uh, day 21 or 22, the performance was still fairly stable. Uh, you have people like that who can train heavy very often and will have no problem recovering. Like neurologically speaking, I mean, because heavy lifting oftentimes has very low volume of work. So it's not a problem of recovering physically. It's more of a problem of CNS fatigue. Now, I know that CNS fatigue is a, a term that is controversial. Some people say that CNS fatigue does not exist. Well, it does, but it's just that people don't understand what it is. CNS fatigue, quote unquote, is a depletion of dopamine or a resistance to do a, a, a short-term resistance to dopamine, either due to an excessive release of dopamine, so by heavy lifting, or an inflammation of the dopamine receptors, or it can be the depletion of that dopamine. So, so when you have that, then you will have symptoms of CNS fatigue, you will have low training motivation, you will have the urge to binge, especially on high sugar foods, uh, you will have uh, like a lethargic behavior, you're down, you're lazy, uh, sex drive going down. So, so, so that is, these are signs of CNS fatigue. Now, some people will train daily very heavy and will have no problem at all. Me, if I train, I max out every day. Within three or four days, I will feel lethargic, loss of motivation. Uh, my mood swings will, will, will happen pretty easily. Now, it's because neurologically speaking, some people are great at recovering from neurologically intense work. And, and you'll see that those who can do that recover fast and easily from heavy lifting are those who are the least prone to choke under pressure because it requires pretty much the same neurological nature or benefit. Now, if you are, if you remember what I said earlier, when your nervous system gets amped up, when it gets excited, you need to calm it down to bring it to the optimal performance level. That's why some people will do better in competition when they have that high adrenaline, high dopamine release, which excites their CNS, neurons firing super fast. They are capable of staying in that optimal performance zone because if they start to get overexcited, they, their high level of serotonin will bring them back down to the optimal level. Those who don't have that high serotonin or GABA will stay overexcited and start to choke under pressure. S things get, get going too fast, tension affecting technique and stuff like that. Now, those who can train heavy often are also those who do very well under pressure because it requires the same capacity. Here's what happens. When you're lifting heavy weights in training, you will increase CNS excitation. The heavier you go, the more force you need to produce, the more you are exciting your nervous system. So at the end of the heavy workout, your CNS is firing on all cylinders. Okay? Now, if it keeps firing like that for a long time, well, it can, you can risk either depleting dopamine, because dopamine is what is being used to increase CNS activation, or you can build a short-term resistance to dopamine because it gets all, your receptors get overexcited, overexcited, and they stay excited and they become resistant. So the next day, that dopamine depletion or resistance have you lose motivation, you feel lethargic, you feel run down. Now, on top of that, if your nervous system keeps staying excited for hours after the workout, you are staying in what we call sympathetic nervous system mode, fight or flight mode, 
which comes with an increase in cortisol level. Cortisol is a stress hormone that will negatively impact muscle growth and muscle recovery. So if you are someone who has a hard time calming their brain down after a heavy session, then the neurological and muscular recovery from such session will take a lot more time. And as a result, you cannot train heavy as often. But if you have the neurotransmitter to easily calm down your brain after those sessions, serotonin or GABA, then maybe 30 minutes, 20 minutes after the session, your nervous system is already calmed down. So you're not spending hours creating dopamine depletion or creating receptor desensitization. You are also easily bringing cortisol back down, which will facilitate recovery from the session. So that's why some people can train heavy very often, while others, if they train heavy once, it will negatively affect them for one or two more days afterwards. And if these guys try to lift heavy four, five days a week, they won't be able to recover well, they will feel like crap all the time, and they will overproduce cortisol, which will negate their capacity to build muscle. So, and also, it's a good correlation between those who can perform better under pressure or those who choke under pressure. Those who can train heavy very often without having recovery issues are likely those who will do better in competition than, uh, than others because they won't choke. It's the same neurological capacity calming their nervous system down when it's overexcited. So that's why you have differences in how much weight you can lift, how heavy you can train, and how often you can train heavy.